Aloha everyone. It is time to take another look at the Crater Lake in the Halemaumau Summit Crater on top of the Kilauea Volcano. This update picks up on October 3rd, 2019 when the National Park Service released this photograph. In this image of the summit crater, we are looking at the Aloha Stadium located in Honolulu superimposed on top of the crater lake. The lake surface area is about that of the size of a U.S. football field. And just to give a little bit more context, the Aloha Stadium has a 50,000 person capacity. On October 10th, USGS published this photograph showing that the lake continues to grow in size and in depth. If you pay attention to this rock right here, in the next image that was released on um, October 19th, you can see that there has been a significant change in the depth of the water and the size of the lake since the 10th, only nine days later. On October 20th, USGS released this time-lapse video which covers about 1.5 hours and shows the motion of the water a surface at the summit of Kilauea. They say the contrast has been enhanced to highlight the surface motion. Seems USGS may be taking a page out of my book and trying to do some color enhancement in order to better illustrate the motion of these uh, of the influx of the fresh water coming into the crater pond. However, their contrast enhancement I don't think quite illustrates uh, what we're seeing here. Here's my version. Now, like you've seen in previous videos, I've added the false color imagery to the video in order to really bring out the details of the uh, influx of water and the currents and circulation that it's creating. You can really see at the edges where the streams are coming in. And we've got two different types of streams, it looks like. We've got one stream that seems to be more fresh water with less sulfur, but then you can see the, the lighter blue streaks coming in that seem to indicate they're more sulfur rich. On October 25th, the USGS released this comparison image showing a photograph from October 19th and comparing it to the left image of October 25th. If you look up at the top center of the image where the arrow is located, you will see this rock in both images. This gives you an idea just how much this lake has changed in just those, what, six days? On October 26th, USGS and Hawaii's Volcanoes National Park were able to fly a modified drone with a cable suspending a water collection vessel down to the crater lake in order to obtain a sample. And it seems that they were successful in obtaining that sample and hopefully soon we will all know exactly what the analysis shows. So hopefully it won't be too long until we know what the composition of the Halemaumau Crater Lake is. Before I continue, just a quick little reminder, if you enjoy this type of content and want to get notifications on when new updates are available, you really need to click that subscribe button and click the bell icon and select all notifications. Only then will you receive all notifications. And don't forget, of course, to hit that like button and let me know that you enjoyed this video and want to see more. Finally, don't forget to check me out over on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can find links to those and more down in the description below. Now to wrap up the report on the Crater Lake, I want to share with you this video presentation that the USGS provided back on the 27th of September. In 2018, the largest Lower East Rift Zone eruption and summit collapses in 200 years resulted in drastic changes on Kilauea Volcano. At the summit, more than 60 collapse events caused the floor of Halemaumau, a crater within the caldera, to drop more than 500 meters, that is 1,600 feet. In July 2019, yet another change occurred at the summit. Water appeared at the bottom of Halemaumau. On September 27, 2019, USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory scientists talked about the water pond, why it appeared, how it's monitored, and its potential hazards. The pond was first observed on July 25, 2019. And at that time, it was difficult to see. Luckily, the aerial survey that was going on had very high resolution images that were used to confirm that this small puddle uh, was, was actually there. The, the pond was very small. It was about 10 meters wide, 
or about 33 feet across, and, and very shallow. Over the last two centuries uh, in the history of the observation of Kilauea Crater and Halemaumau, um, there had not been any recorded water. Uh, frequent visitors to the, to the caldera, especially in the winter, uh, know that rainfall will pond on the crater floor in small patches. Um, but, you know, they're very small and they usually evaporate during the following day if it's not continuing to rain. Rainfall retention is a little bit higher outside the crater because of all the ash deposits there, making it more difficult for rain to percolate down into the rock. But still, you know, the existence of a persistent crater lake um, is not known over the last two centuries. Questioning uh, Hawaiian kupuna about whether there are mentions of water lakes in the summit um, have not turned up anything in Mele or or other um, recordings. The pond has been present for two months now. The water level has slowly uh, risen. And today, uh, the water pond is, is about 100 meters long, a bit over 300 feet in the east-west dimension, and about 50 meters kind of in the north-south dimension, or about 150 uh, feet or so. That's about the size of a football field, so it's pretty big size and pretty big change over you know, a relatively short period of time. We've been tracking this water level rise very closely on a near daily basis. What we see is that the uh, rise rate is, is relatively steady. It's about uh, six inches per day. The total depth of the pond is, is approaching 10 meters or so, so a little over 30 feet deep. The pond has this kind of greenish yellow color um, and it's not uniform over the, the surface. As there are segments of the pond that are kind of bluer or more clear and others that are more yellow or green or opaque. The greenish yellowish colors, presumably uh, because of sulfur. High resolution videos show the circulation and, and mixing, um, but what you can see in these circulation videos is what looks like uh, clearer, fresher water uh, that's coming in from the south margin, kind of upwelling um, and mixing in to the pond. And one other common feature on the pond is, is the steaming that we see. That's another testament to the fact that the pond is, is scalding hot. The water table uh, under Kilauea Volcano has been there for decades, if not centuries. Um, over the last several decades, it's been roughly in the same place, uh, several hundred meters below the f crater floor. It was originally discovered in 1973 when a National Science Foundation um, research drill hole was drilled about a mile south of where the lake is now. Um, and it drilled down to sea level, but it found water uh, just about 500 yards below the crater floor. The water in the well has been monitored since then off and on. Um, and it, uh, its level has varied a bit, but not, not a whole lot, probably less than uh, 10 or 20 yards over, the, over since 1973. Um, many people have looked to see whether the water level would be affected by summit activity. And uh, there were some differences that could be ascribed to those volcanic events, but nothing very definite. Um, and certainly during the collapse in 2018, many of us thought that there would be a large uh, change in the, in the water level, uh, but there wasn't. We were all kind of stumped when there was this huge collapse that took the bottom of Halimama Crater below the, where the water level was thought to have been, and there was no water there. So over the past year, we've uh, kind of accepted that maybe there were some error in the water table um, estimates early on. Uh, but in July, uh, there was water coming back into the crater and we hypothesized that it either was the returning water level of uh, groundwater or accumulated rainwater from just the nearby uh, superficial rainfall. Um, but its steady growth and its uh, color suggests that it's part of the groundwater system that's recovering from the 2018 collapse. Before everything happened in the summit, there was a, a fairly level water table. The first graphic shows uh, a profile uh, across the crater floor in, in cartoon uh, style. 
Uh, it's not the scale, but it shows Holly Bottom Crater uh, within the crater floor of Kilauea caldera. And the blue area below is the water table that's about 500 yards below the floor, Kilauea caldera floor. Uh, this is the way it's been very stably, um, except when eruptions happen on the crater floor. In 2008, when the magma rose up to the uh, crater floor and eventually created the, the uh, lava lake, um, as it was rising through the groundwater, it apparently uh, developed a steam sleeve around it to insulate the water, uh, the groundwater from the magma, and therefore essentially prevent more explosive interactions. In 2018, when the crater floor collapsed, the groundwater uh, either dropped with the crater floor or somehow um, vacated that space and it became uh, quite a bit deeper. After the collapse, the, uh, which is shown as a V here in cartoon style, the V, by the way, is about 2,000 feet deep, but the water table uh, went down with the collapsing crater floor and it was well below the bottom of the new Hale Mo'omo'o pit. Um, with time, that rose, and in July of this year, it became visible at the bottom of the pit, and it's continued to rise ever since. From the uh, 1973 drill hole, we know how deep the water table is at that location, about a mile south of the current uh, crater lake. Um, with geophysical information from around the crater, and the crater floor, we think that the water table may be a bit higher to the north side of the crater. And um, as the water table returns, it's seeking hydraulic equilibrium with the water table around it. Uh, so it may actually, it, it probably will go up to at least a level of the water in the well to the south of the caldera, uh, but it may go a bit higher. We, we know this from examples of mine lakes where on the mainland where mines are excavated to depths greater than the water table. And in order to continue mining, they have to pump all the water out while the mine is active. Once the, once the mine becomes inactive and is no longer used, the pumping stops and they allow the groundwater to come back. Uh, so there are many observations of this process of water coming back to seek equilibrium with the groundwater around it. Uh, there have been a few models that suggest pretty much as we've hypothesized, this will be a slow process, although in our rocks, the rise is quite rapid compared to what it would be in a, in a different type of rock on the mainland. But it's doing exactly what it should, and it should slow down as it approaches that hydraulic equilibrium. Uh, level. And today, the water tables uh, continue to rise. We expect it to rise another 60 or 70 yards before it reaches hydraulic equilibrium with the groundwater around it. Or the groundwater underneath the crater <coughs> is, is confined by structures around it. What's called high level water because it's so high above sea level um, does not extend to the ocean, for example. It, it cuts off about at the Kauai Fault Zone, the Lahina Fault Zone. And, so there's some sort of structure within those fault zones that impounds, that keeps the water high within the caldera. The water kind of sits underneath Kilauea caldera. There's no evidence that it goes very far, um, and certainly not within the rift zones. But the rift zones themselves also act as hydraulic barriers to groundwater um, locally. For example, the area between Pahoa and uh, Keao, <clears throat> there's a huge amount of groundwater going through that, but the East Rift Zone confines it north of the Rift Zone. It's a dynamic time at Kilauea Summit right now, so we're keeping a close eye on the water pond to look for any possible changes, and we're doing that through a number of, of, of means. First of all, we have a webcam that we set up on the West Caldera Rim. We're also going on a near daily basis on foot to make a direct observation. And one of the most important things that we do is take uh, measurements with a laser rangefinder of the water level. So we'll walk out a short distance uh, to the West Caldera Rim. We'll set up a tripod and set up our laser rangefinder uh, or make a number of measurements of, of the water level. It's important to keep in mind that the distance there is actually, we're pretty far away. Uh, we're about 2,000 feet above the uh, water pond. 
temperature based on the thermal camera measurements of the water surface is about 70 degrees Celsius or about 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's telling us that the water is heated by the magmatic system from, from depth. One thing that we've noticed uh, through tracking is that that water temperature has been uh, very stable. We also rely on visual observations, taking high resolution photographs. We're also monitoring on regular overflights and that gives us a view of portions of the pond that we can't necessarily see from the ground. And in, in addition to that visual monitoring and the field measurements and the thermal monitoring, we have our uh, extensive network of geophysical and geodetic and, and geochemistry uh, monitoring tools uh, that are situated at the summit. Uh, Kilauea is one of the best monitored volcanoes on Earth and the summit network is particularly dense. So there's a, a really close, continuous view of, of what's going on there. The next step in monitoring the pond and, and its potential hazards is really taking a direct sample of the water to look at the chemistry. Being able to put a constraint on how much sulfur the, uh, the pond is actually absorbing would be very useful for monitoring. At other volcanic lakes, changes in lake chemistry can sometimes be a precursor to changes on the volcano and changes deeper in the magmatic system. So being able to take direct measurements and track the chemistry of the pond is, a, is really a fundamental part of monitoring it. We're working with Hawaii Volcanoes National Park um, to look at the feasibility of how we're going to collect that sample. It's not a, an easy thing to do. It's a challenging location. It's, the pond is very deep in the crater. At Kilauea or any other volcano, whenever you have magma interacting with, uh, with water, there is the potential for explosive activity. At Kilauea's summit, um, most likely those explosions uh, would be relatively small, affecting just the immediate caldera floor. We know from our observations of coastal entries that magma or lava mixing with water of any kind, ocean water or uh, fresh water, can result in ex uh, minor explosions. But it doesn't always, sometimes, uh, the lava goes just straight into the ocean without much interaction. We've seen that uh, also. Uh, so it's not a, a guarantee that lava encountering this crater link at the summit will create even minor explosions, but it might. And so we should be prepared for that. There are geological inferences that larger explosions have happened. Modeling based on the inferences from past explosions centuries ago suggest that two things have to occur for the water lake to contribute to explosions, that is the existence of the lake, and the second is very fast rising magma coming to the surface, faster than we've probably seen in the last two centuries at the summit. So <clears throat> we should be positioned fairly well to see uh, precursors of such activity since it would be relatively unusual to what we've seen in the past. The pond is, is very new, uh, definitely in the, in the past 200 years. We haven't seen activity like this. So we're keeping a close eye on this and really um, looking for any kind of signs that might be potential precursors for, for larger scale activity in the future. Inflation that would indicate magma rising or seismic activity that would indicate unrest in the deeper magmatic system. It is possible, and it, this has happened at other volcanic lakes, that small explosions have occurred with, with little or no warning. But again, those are most likely events that would just impact the immediate uh, caldera area. The takeaway right now is that there's no immediate signs of imminent increased hazard at the summit. Sulfur dioxide emission rates are, are low, and seismicity is it's elevated relative to the, the levels before the 2018 eruption. Uh, but it's stable. Looking at all the indicators, it's a, it paints a relatively stable picture at the summit. And we're continuing to keep a very close eye on all of those indicators to see uh, any hint of, of change in the future that, that might be a precursor to, to, to more hazardous activity. The appearance of this lake um, has offered us an unprecedented opportunity to actually study the, how it forms and um, perhaps give us clues about why, it, why the water table was depressed in the first place. Um, and that may lead us to some um, interesting insights into the collapse itself. And that does it for this great presentation. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, you have an amazing morning 
afternoon or evening.